Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy and ever living God, great in your mercy that we may be drawn to Christ, lifted high on the cross, and by his redeeming love be raised to everlasting life with him, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Great and gracious God, you who by the Spirit brought these words into fruition and preserved them down the long corridor of time, by that same Spirit make them come alive today in our reading, that in hearing we might believe and believing we might follow and live out lives that would give you glory. For it's in Christ I pray. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12. Hear the word of God. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up and before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him, nothing that he was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Of him, the Lord, through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him the portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors.
and they shake their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let the Lord be his refuge. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? As dogs around me, they circle me. I can number all my bones. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? My clothing they divided for my garments casting lots. Oh, Lord, do not desert me, but hasten to my aid. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? I will praise you to my people. Proclaim you in their midst. Oh, fear the Lord and praise God. Give glory to God's name. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him a name above all other names. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Our second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 16. Hear the word of God. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. The Lord also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offense for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through Jesus' flesh, And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for the one who is promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of son, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Our gospel reading is from John 19, verses 17 through 30. Hear the word of God. (laughs) 
So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to that which is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. Dear people of God, God sent Jesus into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of eternal life. So we pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity and witness and service, for all church leaders and ministers and the people whom they serve. We pray for the nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that justice and peace may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Gracious God, comfort all who suffer. You are the strength of all who sorrow. Hear the cry of those in misery and need. and their affliction, show them your mercy. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us. Merciful God, creator of the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be proclaimed with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Behold, the cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Come, let us worship. Behold, the cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Come, let us worship. Behold, the cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Come, let us worship.
So 